The Gringo Stole Christmas. Of interesting people and to follow everybody now. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Angel. And I saw how the Gringo Stole Christmas, and I laughed my butt off throughout the entire movie. This I'm was glad. This was the, exactly the Christmas comedy I needed because everything is so generic and you know, everything's always boy meets girl, girl meets boy. So this I I this is exactly what I needed. Something fresh and different. And I like the guess who's coming to dinner tactic to it. So great job on this film. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you dug it in that particular way because I, I'm also tired of the, the you know, I, I remember Bad Santa was like, oh, yeah, I want to I want to do a Christmas a holiday movie like that one because it's just like, a, you know, the other side of the equation. It, it takes sort of a British sarcasm to 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 have the the huevos to do something like that. Yeah. So my first question is, how did you get involved with the project? This has been a long time making. It, it, when I did about a decade ago, from Prada to Nada, for mm -hmm. Lionsgate. Love that movie, Lisa, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Lisa Elsie, who was the executive who I knew from Ridley Scott's company when I was there doing commercials, had just got the job uh, uh, Lionsgate got me Prada to Nada and then when we, I was finishing she goes you have to read this thing it's hilarious right so back then I read it I obviously wanted to do it because it's, I wanted to go deeper or funnier or edgier than Prada was allowed to right Prada yeah. has a confinement of you have to do this romantic comedy so I wanted to go more comedy and uh, but back then you were I think it was just difficult to get the stars to align with that one because it's still Latin niche, difficult to get a finance, getting people attracted to it. And so I tried to do it. We started it actually with, with her in command, Lisa Elsie at Lionsgate. And then it fell apart because we couldn't lock in the lead actor. So uh, tried a few more times throughout the years. And then we finally, when we got George, which is actually the right guy to play this role, uh, everything came came back together, you know. So so it's it's been a long time trying to make this thing on and off. Yeah, I could not agree anymore. George Lopez, one of my all time favorites. I mean, I've watched him even since his first movie, Ski Patrol. I mean, that's how long I followed him. So he was perfect in this role. It, it was like watching an episode of of his show. Yeah, he was just being him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Basically, yeah. who he is, he's just being himself in this yeah, role like exactly what was it like working with them like did you like give him the input like just be yourself on this movie because it was just fantastic yes i mean it's it's funny because you you think you know someone because you watch them on shows i'm a big fan like you are i love his stand-up i think it's just brilliant pitch perfect social commentary comedy and uh but you know until you meet someone you don't know someone right a lot of times you idolize people and then you meet them and you're disappointed mm -hmm. and uh with him is exactly what you would expect and then some so once you get over the starstruck aspect of meeting george lopez and uh or a hero of yours right and now it's like okay now we gotta work together and he's in front of you looking at you for like how do you want to do this angel and i'm like how do you want to do this <laughs> it's like I just want to say action to George Lopez, but, uh, you know, no joke, joke aside is I, I would kind of go, this is the scene we have to do. How do you want to do it? Right. What, what do you want to bring on to it? So I encourage him to be whatever he wanted it to be really, because he has the tone the experience. He's that character in a way, in, in the sense that he, uh, not not the nuances of the personality of the character, but having been a Chicano born and raised and struggled from East LA to success in Hollywood, right? Mm -hmm. So he can draw from a lot of personal experience. So this script is written by a Chicano from East LA, born and raised, interpreted by George Lopez. You got the right elements and those elements have more experience than I do there from, from that particular world, right? So you want to bring that on encourage improvisation how would you say this add stuff if you want which it did and then you just guide it so that he makes it through the story and doesn't go off the tangent yeah and i really surprised me was i saw emily tosta and jack kilmer in two different genre films like earlier like a while back i saw emily in willie's wonderland a full-on horror film 
but in a way she's still playing a headstrong daughter type you know in this movie and that's what she played in willie's wonderland she's like the headstrong type who ends up becoming you know you know helping our lead out and then jack kilmer this is for me a total opposite of what i saw him in he was in detective night independence the final one of bruce Willis's last movies he was the villain in that movie so to see him here play a more laid back just trying to be accepted type of role i mean he they they both did a tremendous job and they had such great chemistry on the set what was it in the film what was it like working with them it was great because um they're very professional experienced actors even though they're very young so you have the benefit of your oh, you fit the role perfectly and but it's like i'm talking to an old timer you know they know how to memorize their lines and hit their marks and bring on their own ideas so it, you know it really was luxury i I cannot say, well, I have problems with this, I struggle with that. No, they can't prepare. They know what they're doing. They're brilliant at what they do. And uh, every take is a good take, it's, you know? So it's I in that sense, I was in heaven with them because they are the adults in the room in this movie, yeah. right? The younger guys are the ones that are most sensible and do not understand what's the problem with the old timers, right? right. <laughs> so, so in a way, they had to ground it, but I also didn't want him to just be the victim, you know, the white token victim of the movie in this situation. Right. I want him to be smart. I know his dad. I have worked with his dad in a TV commercial a long time ago, and I was like, okay, I want, I want that devil inside to come out through your soft-spoken personality approach to it, right? So, so I was able to get him to not just be the victim, but be a smart victim of the situation. And uh, and Emily's, I think she is the adult in the room. It's like, what's going on, right? So she was able yeah. to ground the whole thing, but she's so funny also, right? So, so, you know, you tiptoe around their personalities and what the character needs, and you want everybody to complement each other. So not everybody, everybody's not screaming out, out the same thing, right? And mm -hmm. so they were able to give me the nuances, really. I think those two characters are the nuances. Yeah. Another thing was, you know, we have this, we have a, what could be the stereotypical Chicano boys, you know, the three, the three little goons, goof offs. But I like the fact that one of them's kind of smarter than the other two. And, and I like the fact that they, they, they're, they're, they're so funny in this movie. I mean, props has to go to them, but I like their interactions, not just with George, but with each other as well. And I like the fact that they're also kind hearted because in a lot of those type of films, you always see them kind of like really tough and, you know, they think they're, they're better than everyone else. And it starts out as that, but I like throughout as the film progresses, they show like they're, they have hearts of gold. And that's something you really see with this type of role in, in these movies. So it's cool that they, that it went this route too, that these guys are like, yeah, they may be tough, but they're also kind hearted and they're willing to go above and beyond to help their fellow neighbors out and i think that's that's a great message to send with that exactly and they and they are themselves content content creators these are influencers with a huge following uh the three of them in their own rights and they know each other so when i was casting for the roles i was going like wait but this guy knows this guy this guy what if i just hire them all instead of having a regular actor and a content creator and an influencer let's bring this group together because they have worked together, have done things together. They know how to write, improvise, do their own thing, right? And they're actually very sweet people. So as I was doing Zoom casting sessions, I realized it's actually fun, cool, sweet people. So I didn't want to do the cliche of, the, yeah, the tough guy. I want to, they have to ha have a heart and soul and they have to be funny and they have to play against their own stereotype that they represent, right? So let's say a silly version of that yeah. tough guy, you know, low rider thing, right? And, uh, but for me, it's always about trying to reverse it a little bit just for fun, right? Like grandma is usually the sweet grandma sitting back there with a smile. I was like, no, no, no. The grandma this is inspired on, which is the writer's grandma, and my own grandma, they were tough cookies. They'll look at you like that. And they'll throw that chancla across the room and, and hit you in the forehead. My mom was like that. Out. My mom was like that because I'm, I'm, I'm Puerto Rican. So I, I get that. I totally I grew up with now, that. Chan, like you fly straight into your head, you know, if you don't watch yeah, out. <laughs> exactly. If you push too far, you get the belt. And that's like one, that's like the lesson yeah. learned. You're only going to get the belt one time. You may get the chancla plenty of times, but that's yes. you're only going to get once. That's all I can say. And, and, and Alma would show up, the actress, 
Yeah. And she, she, her default was you know, sweet. I was going, no, no, no. You get a beer in your hand and a, and a blind chihuahua. And you don't buy what's going on here. And then right away she goes like, and she looks like that. And you go, that's it. That's the look. <laughs> she pulled it off. Yeah, she pulled it off nicely. And you even have the aunt who's always drunk and thinks she's she's the most beautiful woman on the face of the earth. And Carmen, that was that. She's just. Is that reminded me of that reminded me of my like one of my aunts as well. She was she used to be just like that as well back in the day. So I totally related to this. And, trivia about that is that's my wife and the co-producer of the film. So when I was looking at him, going, "You are that character, right?" It's and in a way, it's kind of like a Friends Phoebe Mexican version. It is yeah. with an iPhone, and so it's like, "So you're gonna be that." You think everything is hilarious, right? And then you're going to record it. So you're going to be my C-cam. So I use a lot of the footage she's shooting. So she's improvising around the characters, doing the the the, the, the funny stuff. And uh, while, you know, when I say cut, she's my producer. She's running around trying to get things done and sorting out problems. And they was like, we got to touch. We got to shoot. We got to shoot. Go, go back in there. Now, now grab the phone. You're the ant again, you know, action. So she had to split her. Her duties from 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 those two things so so drove her crazy but uh, i think i'm glad you liked it because in the end it was like you see it worked yeah exactly i totally agree how long did shooting take and were there any problems that you faced during production because it seems like it seemed like a smooth shoot from what it sounds like i'm glad you think that and i think the actors felt that but it was anything but because you know making a film is a difficult thing but when you're running up against the wall and the wall was potential SAG strike June 30th. So we had we couldn't push back, but getting financing in place and getting everything sorted out takes forever. By the time it locks, you always have to push back. So we push and push until we hit that wall. So I only have a week and a half of pre-production. I have more prep time in the commercial than I have in this movie. And then I only have three weeks barely to shoot because we had electrical storms, lo loss of power, so I lost two half days. So that means I shot the whole movie in 14 days. Wow. And you need about exactly double that amount of time minimum. Normally, so yeah. That brings a bunch of challenges. Uh, and it was hot. It was like 100 plus degree temperatures. So when you're outside, we're melting. It's like it's literally melting uh, in Jackson, Mississippi, because we're shooting there because we have a tax rebates and all that. Then I went to Los Angeles and I shot establishing shots and drone shots and all that. So yeah, anything but easy because you're matching things under a tight situation, tight budget, and 100 degree temperatures and people falling of heat exhaustion. Wow! So it's anything but funny. Yeah, but uh, which is funny in of itself. Exactly, but overall, this was a fantastic movie, and I hope people will get to see this because we need a we need a totally different type of Christmas movie, and I think this is the one to do it. So with that said, what's next for you? Is there any new films on the horizon or, or are you going to go keep doing commercials in the meantime? No, I actually uh, got um, a film called Scumbags, which is about uh, four idiots trying to rob a bank and getting stuck in it. <laughs> and uh, it's also a social commentary comedy written by a British writer, a brilliant British writer, Pierce Ashworth. And he's laugh out loud with with the message. And um, that is being set up. So I hope to shoot that early starting next year. And I want to bring your favorite characters, the Vatos from this movie on it. I want to bring George on it. And so uh, I want to bring this this team onto that one and take it to the next level with, with a few new actors involved. So hopefully that all comes together. It's been set up now and you know, it takes forever. So I'm sure we're going to have to push back and push back and eventually make it, but uh, it should be next year. Hopefully. And I hope so. And I would definitely look out for that. That sounds like a type of movie I'd be interested in. So how yeah, me too. I want to see that one. Yep. <laughs> how the Gringo Stole Christmas is coming out December 1st. Those of you who are tired of good old, same old rom-coms want something different. You're going to want to see this one. It's basically guess who, guess who's coming to dinner meets the really funny Latino comedy. It was a fun film. I recommend it. You all check it out. And Angel, thank you so much for taking the time to talk about it. Muchas gracias y feliz Navidad. Tú también. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye.